Hi everyone and welcome back to the Good Life Journey. As we've seen in previous videos, the savings rate is the single most important factor that determines how fast you can make it to financial independence. Whether you have a high or low savings rate determines whether you can cut back your working career by a decade, by two decades or even more. And in a previous video, we compared two very different levels of income and spending. We determined that someone with a $50,000 annual salary that saves $20,000 per year is in a better financial situation than someone who earns $300,000 after tax, but that only saves $50,000. Why? Because what matters most is not your absolute savings, but how much you save in relation to your, the lifestyle that you want to fund, in relation to your costs. What matters most, again, is your savings rate. If random people were approached on the street and asked whether they could name a few of the richest countries in the world, chances are quite high that they would name the US amongst a handful of other countries, right? And of course, it's true that the US will appear in most of the rankings of highest average salaries, but does this mean that their citizens are actually in a good shape financially? In today's video, we examine the data. Specifically, we look at what are the average savings rate found across OECD countries. And we want to figure out what does this mean in relation to achieving financial independence. Which countries are really in a better financial situation when you look beyond salaries? Stick around and let's find out. All right, and here's the data set. Uh, highlighted is the European Union and all the other countries, uh, which we'll go over in a second, are in the background. But what I would like to point out is that the data set goes all the way, all the way back to the year 2000. The y-axis is the savings rate in percentage points, and it goes all the way to the year 2022. But we can see that the pandemic years are clearly outliers. You see this like inverse V-shape. And to simplify the content of this video, we're going to look at a pre-pandemic 2019 data. All right, and let's start out by looking at EU countries. So European households on average in 2019 had only a 6% savings rate. They only saved 6% of their net take-home pay. Although the overall picture is grim in terms of savings rate, there are quite substantial differences across countries. So as we can see, the top performing country was Sweden in 2019 with a little bit over 15.5% savings rate. Next comes Netherlands with 12% and Germany had uh, almost uh, 11% as well. And on the other side of the spectrum, we find Greece with almost minus 10% savings rate in 2019, Portugal with minus 2.2%, or Latvia oh, very close to 0%. These negative values actually mean that households are spending more than the net uh, take-home pay. And what were the dynamics across time of these countries? Well, we have like three groups of countries. So on the one hand, we have countries that have experienced uh, increases in savings rate. So for example, Sweden goes all the way from a 0.4% savings rate in the year 2000 to managing almost 15.5% uh, in 2019. On the other hand, we have countries like Portugal, which have had the reverse trend. They've gone all the way from nearly 7% savings rate at the beginning of the period towards minus 2%. And on the third, and on, on the third hand, we have uh, some countries which are remarkably stable in terms of savings rate. So for example, Germany, we observe that the line has barely moved across uh, over the period uh, between nine and ten percent or also france uh, is slightly lower but also extremely steady and the picture doesn't get really too much better outside of the eu so non-eu oecd countries we can see that the top performing one was uh, switzerland in 2019 was 17.3 percent followed by mexico very close to sweden's value so 15 and a half percent Australia, 12.2%, and the fourth one is Chile with 11.6%. Uh, meanwhile, the worst performing countries outside of the EU were the UK, minus 0.5% in 2019, um, Canada with 2%, and New Zealand with 3.1%. How did the US perform? Um, the US presented 9.1% savings rate, so a very similar rate than France. All right, and let's go ahead and examine the very best of cases. So Switzerland's 17.3 savings rate. According to this financial independence calculator, we observed that it would take uh, an average citizen of Switzerland with that savings rate almost 40 years to reach financial independence. In other words, close to a full working career. Of course, this is the very best of cases. For all other countries, reaching financial independence on average is completely off the cards. 
What would happen though if you managed to optimize your monthly expenses and your savings rate? In this graph, I plot how long it takes to reach financial independence on the y-axis, depending on how aggressive your savings rate is. The assumptions and financial calculator used are referenced in the description of the video below. First of all, notice that this graph is a curve, not a straight line. It's a non-linear relationship, which means that in some parts of the curve, small increases in savings rate have outsized effects on the amount on reducing your timeline to reaching financial independence. This occurs particularly for the lower end of the spectrum. So in other words, if you managed to increase your savings rate from 5% to 10%, the outsized effect would be much larger than for, for example, someone who's already very frugal and already has a 50% and is struggling to, to have a 55% savings rate. The good news is that what this means for somebody who's starting out on this journey is that very small tweaks on your monthly budget are going to have very large effects on your timeline to reaching financial independence. If you saved 20% of your take-home pay, you would reach financial independence after 36 years, and therefore you would still manage to retire 5 to 7 years before the conventional retirement age. Save 30% of your take-home pay, and you would reach financial independence after 28 years. This would mean retiring 13 to 15 years before conventional retirement age, and so on. If we reach all the way up to saving 50%, of your net take home pay, you could potentially retire after 16 years and therefore you'd be retiring or not being dependent on employment at least for 20 to 27 years before conventional retirement age. As we've seen, the savings rates presented across OECD countries are extremely disappointing. Low savings rates mean ultimately facing the risk of having to rely too strongly on public pensions. It's risky because the amount of public pensions that retirees will receive in the future is likely to be lower than what retirees enjoy today, resulting from aging populations across most of these OECD countries. The consequence is that the lifestyle of retirees may take a strong hit as they exit the workforce. It's true that we've focused this video quite strongly on the relationship between the savings rate and the possibility of retiring early. But for many, of course, this is not the primary objective. For many, enjoying a career of part-time work may be the ultimate goal, which reduces stress levels and improves work-life balance, and may free up a lot of time to pursue a myriad of other interests. All right, we made it to the end of the video. Please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons if you found value in the content. And also please remember to take care, good luck, and I hope to see you in the next video.